It is a great pleasure and privilege for me to welcome you to Kubaril, and especially to this, our state-of-the-art health facility, which we have called New National Hospital. This hospital was a dream of our Prime Minister, Dr. Kenny DeAnthony, and as he once shared with me during his visit to this site with the then EU ambassador, the area, as you expected, was covered in bush, but he visualized what is here now, a hotel for healing and rehabilitation. What a transformation, what a vision. Thank you, Prime Minister. I take this opportunity, an applause of course. <laughs> I take this opportunity to extend to all of you warm greetings on his behalf and also on behalf of the parliamentary representative for this constituency of Castro South, the Honorable Dr. Robert Lewis, the Cabinet of Ministers, and myself. Your Excellencies, I greet you warmly. You have come here on a special day in the life of your region, but especially your beloved country of France. Today, the 14th of July, is celebrated as a French National Day, or La Fête Nationale Bastille Day, which commemorates the beginning of the French Revolution with the storming of the Bastille Fortress on 14 July 1789, and the unity of the French people during the Fête de la Federation of 14 of July 1790. We have no military parades, no fireworks, no concerts or balls to celebrate with you, Your Excellency. So I say simply in our St. Lucian Creole Palace, Bonne Fête Nationale. As you tour, we can celebrate with you and express our deepest gratitude for this generous gift. Special thanks to all of you for gathering here for this guided tour of this hospital, which spans across 14,500 square meters and comprises 33 departments. Ladies and gentlemen, this comes at a significant cost. The financing agreement between the government of St. Lucia and the European Union for this project totals 1 million, 51 million euro or $189 million, the largest EU-funded project in the entire Caribbean region. The construction of this hospital forms an integral part of the health sector reform process, which focuses on an integrated, efficient, and effective health system capable of responding to the needs of the population. The new National Hospital is therefore integral to the success of the overall health sector reform initiatives. The overall objective is for the provision of improved secondary care services in St. Lucia. And these services will include outpatient care, accident and emergency, observation beds, general outpatient clinic, orthopedics clinic, ophthalmology, ENT, children's outpatient, STI clinic, obstetrics and gynecology, day surgery, investigation, dialysis unit, inpatient care, general acute wards, children's wards, obstetric wards, gynecology, special care baby unit, intensive care unit, diagnosis and treatment, pathology, laboratory, radiology, operating theaters, delivery suite, physiotherapy medical support, pharmacy, central sterile supply, medical records, offices and library, a mortuary, general support, hospital administration and other. Administration meeting rooms, main entrances, shops, chapel, telephones, building maintenance, laundry, kitchen staff, dining, staff dining, goods, receipt and distribution, 
on call suites, changing rooms. The supply of equipment and furniture for this hospital is financed from a grant from the EU Commission to the amount of 4.5 Euro million Euro, or approximately 16 million EC dollars. This will include the provision of equipment for the operating theaters, X-ray and imaging, laboratory, physiotherapy equipment, monitoring and cardiology, neonatology and critical care. Half of the equipment lots have been approved by the EU and delivery and installation commenced in June 2014. The equipping process is expected to be completed by January 2015. A number of other construction items for which we, I mean the government of St. Lucia, are responsible. This includes wayfinding and signage, hospital laundry, hospital kitchen, installation of renal units, expansion of card access control, hospital cafeteria. Distinguished ambassadors, we in the Ministry of Health, by extension, the government and people of St. Lucia, express sincere thanks once again to the European Union for such a significant gesture, a contribution towards the excellent quality healthcare delivery to all who access the services. At this juncture, permit me to identify additional support which is being received by the Ministry of Health. I speak of the National Indicative Program, costing 6.8 million euros, which is geared at strengthening our primary healthcare services to support our new hospital. Some of our successes thus far include human resource development or training of healthcare professionals in priority areas such as maternal and child health program, chronic non-communicable diseases, vector control, oral health, and mental health. Other areas include health financing, quality improvement system, purchasing of equipment for primary health care. We look forward to the continuing support of your countries as we collaborate in pursuance of the goal of developing health services delivery system that is accessible, affordable, and sustainable, and of international standard. So to you, our EU partners in health, on behalf of our Prime Minister, government and people of St. Lucia, and in particular, Team Health, for your support in the past, the present, and the continuing future support, I say thank you. Merci beaucoup. Muchas gracias. And of course, to all of you here present, as you prepare to undertake this exercise, which is the guided tour of the hospital, I am so pleased to once again greet you and say, welcome. Bienvenue. Bienvenue. I thank you. I am, of course, delighted to be here uh, today and witness the near complete state of the hospital. Uh, conceptualization of the project uh, dates back more than 10 years. At the time, government of uh, St. Lucia, uh, Lucia decided on a rationalization of the country's health sector so as to ensure the optimum delivery of health care. The government of St. Lucia recognized that the more than 100-year-old uh, Victoria Hospital had become obsolete uh, in delivering 21st century uh, health care. This was, as we've already heard from the minister, the biggest project ever executed by the EU in the region, and of a particularly complex nature, I must say. So, as many uh, expect, some significant setbacks and challenges were faced. Uh, I have to commend both the government of St. Lucia and my own recent and uh, previous colleagues in the delegation for their perseverance and dedication that has gotten us to where we are today. So I am extremely happy today to announce um, this, and I quote, the rest is history. 
That's my main quote. <laughs> <laughs> the new hospital is a very tangible testimony to the fact that the European Union delivers. The hospital, as I noted above, is the largest uh, infrastructure project ever executed in Eastern Caribbean. It's been constructed at a cost of 130 million EC dollars, or 38 million euros. Um, I will leave it up to you um, mathematicians amongst the audience uh, to work out uh, exactly how much that is per capita, but I can assure you it's a lot. Um, the EU is proud to have partnered up with the government to build and fully equip uh, what will be the most modern uh, hospital in the English-speaking Caribbean. The um, hospital has a lot of new features, but they've already been mentioned by the minister, so I think I'll skip that paragraph. Um, I will also say something else about the hospital, which is quite uh, remarkable, I think. First of all, the location. It's a wonderful location for this hospital here. We are set on a, on a hillside overlooking the Caribbean Sea. It appears perfectly well suited for rest and recuperation. In an age of scarce resources and stifling energy costs for the region, I'm also very encouraged to note um, the many sustainable design features of the hospital. As an example, uh, wards in the wings are now uh, without active air conditioning. Uh, this was not because it was forgotten. Uh, it is because instead uh, the, war, the, the wards they rely on the channeling of the trade winds through the configuration of windows and blinds behind the, the hospital or making the hospital very, very energy efficient. And I think that is something uh, which is a bit of a design accomplishment. In addition, the hospital is designed to resist regional hurricanes and earthquakes, and it is thus set to, to serve St. Lucia for a long time. I would, of course, like to say uh, that it'll last for another 100 years, but uh, uh, I don't know if I should say that because you never know with technology, do you? Um, Apart from this magnificent building, the EU is also supporting St. Lucia's health sector reform program with an amount of almost 7 million euros. And this program uh, started in 2013 and will go on for four full years. Finally, uh, the Prime Minister told us last time we met here at the hospital that he and his government and his people uh, were reflecting on a good name for the hospital uh, that would both remind us of St. Lucia and also of the European Union. And uh, I'm, very, I'm delighted to hear that uh, a name has been found and I really look forward to, to the announcement of this name um, when the Prime Minister, he is ready. <laughs> and um, so I have, not, uh, I have not said too much, have I now? Uh -huh. Good. Um, and apart from this, I would like to thank you all very much for coming here. And I'm sure the, uh, our chair lady will now purse, pass the floor to someone far more important than me. Thank you very much. Much has already been said about this new facility. And what I'm going to do this afternoon is just to perhaps complete the picture by mentioning one or two important facts. Firstly, Your Excellency, again I thank you for this wonderful gift. I know that this gift means as much to us as it does the European Union. And uh, only a few days ago I was in Brussels and had the opportunity to discuss the hospital with friends of ours who work with the European Union and to report on the progress of the hospital. But there's no doubt in my mind that for the European Union, this will be the only project of its kind for a long time, if any at all. I don't think that we're going to see a massive investment like that by the European Union in the near future in any single country. So what we have here is very unique, very special, and. Uh, 
we are a people who understand what it means to say thanks. And as we go forward, we need to say thank you so much to the European Union for this magnificent gift. So Ambassador, please convey our thanks once again. Thank you, Absolutely, all the member states were here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to use the minister's language, this is Team Europe. Understood. <laughs> um, a few minor points. First, the distinguished ambassador to the European Union, from the European Union to the Eastern Caribbean, mentioned that we are in receipt of funds not only for the construction of the building, purchase of equipment, and critically and crucially training for this facility. This is really very important. In fact, last year, some 43 scholarships were awarded to St. Lucians to receive training in preparation for taking responsibility for this hospital. I just want to say that this training is absolutely vital. It is critical and it is crucial because we have to make sure that when the transition is made from Victoria Hospital to this hospital, this new hospital, we do not transfer the habits of the past into this new environment and this new facility. It has to be understood that this has to represent a break from what we are accustomed to because we are moving into a new hospital and as you heard with modern day equipment, which will require even greater sophistication than had been the case at Victoria Hospital. I don't want you for one moment believing that I'm putting down the staff of Victoria Hospital because they too do a magnificent job. The reality is that they're doing that job in exceedingly difficult circumstances with severe limitations. And really, it's a test of all their skills to be working in that environment. I'm only signaling that we are making a fundamental break with the past. And for us, it's going to be a new experience and a new adjustment. So in addition to the 43 awards last year, I'm told that there will be another 45 awards to be made this year, or approximately 45, to continue that training program. And again, this is very good news for us. I have in the past indicated that we are in an age of technology. And one of the things that I have spoken to the distinguished ambassador of France, Ambassador Mousse, about is a possibility that we can link directly with French hospitals to make use of emerging technology. So that, for example, um, it would be possible while a major operation is being undertaken at this hospital, that surgeons, whether based at La Menade in Martinique or in France, can look at us while that surgery is being performed and, of course, give us any, give our people any guidance that may be necessary. Or for that matter, exchange information on cases. We really have to move into a new age of technology with medical care. And the historical friendship that we have had will serve us well as we rely on our very special friends to see us through this period. The second thing I want to emphasize, and to continue on the theme that the hospital presents us with new possibilities. We spoke earlier on about the, the training that will be available. Um, we spoke about making use of new technology. But one important development that is being pursued by our chief medical director, who is here with us today, is to convert this hospital into a teaching hospital. This involves us entering into a very special relationship with the University of the West Indies that will allow doctors who are completing their medical degree programs to come to St. Lucia and work here in this hospital. Again, to take this hospital to a new level, to take it to a, a different level. My regret has always been that we didn't take the opportunity to ensure that this hospital had sufficient space and we moved away from the original design by cutting out one of those five fingers of this hospital. I regret that decision, but of course I have to live with it for all kinds of purposes. But I can well see that once this hospital is completed, and if we live the promise of this hospital, it is going to be perhaps the most modern and most sought after hospital in the Caribbean. We therefore will have a responsibility to our neighbors in the Caribbean as we search for new specialization and for new treatment. So Ambassador, 
Ambassador Bafo, I just want to say to you that while this is a gift to the people of St. Lucia, I'm also signaling that it is an opportunity to provide the people of the Eastern Caribbean with, of course, modern care, as I expect this to be the case here. Ladies and gentlemen, I promised you a very short speech. I know it's far more important to go and visit and to see what progress has been made. And so without further ado, I just want to thank you for your presence and to say how delighted I am to see all of you. Once again, we want to express our thanks. The ambassador quite rightly referred to the perseverance, sorry, and dedication of the um, European Union and the Ministry of, of Health. I just want to say that we had to make use of their tremendous knowledge and skills, that once we, we got into trouble here with contractual arrangements, through the support of the European delegation, we were able to resolve some of, the, some of the very difficult and tricky issues that emerged. There's a language that we use a lot in the court system, mediation. Very popular these days. The truth of the matter is that European delegation in Barbados engage in some sound mediation to ensure that some intractable problems will resolve. We have so much to thank you for. So everyone, it is a wonderful pleasure to see all of you. See you as you take the call. Thank you.